Here's another one of those hour-long rambling videos. Hey goblins and welcome back. My name is Baron and I am, I guess you could call me a social alter in the system. Today we are going to be answering some questions and talking more details about our inner world while simultaneously giving you a lesson on how to knit a hat. We've gotten lots of questions on how we make hats, what we're doing with this thing, how to use it, and what it's even called. This is a knitting loom. You can find these um, most craft stores, we find ours at second-hand shops. Um, yeah, they're usually very inexpensive, usually like a couple dollars for one of these. And then you can get random yarn there as well. So it's very affordable to make some hats from things you find at thrift shops, and it's really fun. And it can actually turn into a good hobby. So today I'm going to be doing something a little bit more extreme than anyone else has to do. Instead of using one strand of yarn, I'm going to use four. <laughs> Because we really want this thing to be kind of a multicolored teal. You'll notice we're already wearing a teal beanie. And that's because, you know, we've always liked the style of these. Like, you know, the cable knit ones with the stripes. Like, those are super cool. Everyone in college had them, but, like, we never did, and we always wanted one. So now in our adulthood, it's time to make those dreams come true, and we bought this on Amazon. <laughs> and, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. But we also wanted to knit a teal one out of a lot of the yarns that we had because we had some really cool yarns. And why teal specifically is it's because that is the color of the ribbon for dissociative disorder and PTSD awareness. And that's really great because it's not just specifically DID, it also covers like, you know, OSDD, DDNOS, um, DPDR, um, DDNOS is dissociative disorder not otherwise specified, and uh, DPDR is depersonalization, derealization disorder. So just basically pretend that I'm using one string instead of four, and that's that's what you can do if you want to follow along with me. If you're using more than one, like you can use basically as many as you want, as many as you think you can handle. And I've never knitted any of these things before. This is my first time knitting on this loom, but apparently we've made a bunch with multiple strings before, so apparently I should be able to do this. We'll see. I've watched a lot of the inner world and the outer world, so I figured I would be okay to do this one. Because, you know, I think it was Liberty who wanted to film this originally, and, uh, you know, he just got himself tired out from fronting the whole day the other day and wasn't able to get around to that. And uh, I'm from outer space, and he's from the regular planet in the inner world. And yeah, you'll hear more about that as I go on. And we figured, you know, most of the system was telling me, oh, what about um, having someone who was, you know, living there for a long time giving this video? And I'm like, dude, I've watched Earth so much. I'm like, <laughs> I binge watch Earth and Vanaheim. Like, that's kind of how I roll. Um, in the inner world, if you're in the subsystem that's not in the main part, it can come through and you can watch what's happening in the main parts in the outer world on televisions on the inside. And I think that's pretty great. Um, I watch a lot of TV. I wish I had more of a social life being a social alter, but in the inner world, like, sometimes you're limited with who you're around. It's annoying. All right, so, you've got your string. You'll want to make a slip knot to start this out. So basically take the string over two fingers around the back. So it's looped around. Then you kind of back once more. Take out your fingers and you'll see you have this loop. And then you pull it through 
and that's your loop. That is your slipknot. And you can put that on the very first peg to the right of this bottom one. This is the anchor. Um, you can do it either way. You could put it on here, or you could put it on here. I'm just going to put it on the, the thing today, because that looks safe. That looks like what you're supposed to do. So yeah, and then you start, like, going behind one peg and across over it. Then the same, go behind and then around, almost in like a clockwise motion. And then you just continue on until you have the whole row. And then, then I'll show you what's next. <laughs> So, the questions today, <laughs> I should probably get started on those. Um, the main means of transportation, are they still walking and flying? Um, sort of. <laughs> if you're staying on the main inner world, it's generally, you know, walking or flying. Some people have vehicles. Um, most people have wings. Uh, we don't talk about that or depict that a lot because people get weird about that for some reason, even though that's kind of just, you know, how our system be. So we just kind of yeah, omit that sometimes <laughs> in the face claim drawings. Uh, but yes, some people have vehicles. And now that we have this big, gigantic spaceship hovering in the orbit, we now have kind of uh, shuttles and various things that are being turned into vehicles, like houses getting rockets attached to them, uh, you know, cars getting souped up to be able to get into the atmosphere. There's a bunch of people who have these really fast motorcycles, and only specific alters get those. And those are like, you know, the envy of the system. Coolest bikes ever. So once you have this row, I should probably show you how to make it stay like that. Basically, you take it, wrap it around your finger, and kind of almost make a slip knot, but not really. And then you just stick it on there and pull it tight. Usually it stays. And then you take this row and push it down the peg. And you do that all the way around. And then you continue on with basically doing the same thing, but with a second row, creating a second row above the first one that you just made. And then you do that. <laughs> Next question, was it always this complex? Actually, it was more complex. It's getting simpler now. <laughs> you think I'm joking, but I'm not. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. Uh, it was more complex, you know, to keep everything hidden and make sure that our life could seem as normal as it was on the surface while we got through school. We kind of had to uh, make things really complex and really hidden and basically a whole gigantic puzzle in our head and it was just more complex and now as people are discovering more about it we can kind of like take down these you know methods of hiding stuff and be more open and you know not constantly stressed out on the inside of the system where no one can see you. All right, so we've got the second row done here. You can do the same tying off thing, basically the whole process. It's very convenient. Usually that's just how we roll. And then if you've got one of these, it will make your life a million times easier. It's just one of the hooks that generally comes with the knitting loom. Uh, you can buy fancier ones on, um, you know, you could probably get all of this on Amazon, really. <laughs> or uh, <clears throat> Joann's or Michael's. That's where we see a lot of those as well. Um, general craft shops. You take the bottom loop, and the first one is always like the hardest one to get. I'm gonna have to loosen that a little. Yeah, the more strands of yarn you do, the more difficult it is to get this. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go a few down and then go backwards. Yes! There we go. Got to make sure all four are there still. Sweet. There we go. 
Yeah, usually you start from there and go forward, but I had to go like one back. And then you just go down the line and just loop them over. And like, there's usually a little bit of slack left over from each loop. So that kind of helps you to have some extra room to pull the yarn over the pegs. God, I love those technical difficulties. At least the phone didn't delete the video before this. I thought it did, and I was about to be like, you know what, I'm just going to continue on, and whoever is out can film the intro again. <laughs> but it saved, so we're good. Uh, when were you first aware of your inner world is another one. That's just really interesting, because we can say both nine years old and also, like, 14-ish, because we kind of had, you know... This imaginary land in our head where our imaginary friends lived. In their houses, with the trees all around it. <laughs> and and sometimes, like, your brain was almost trapped in there. Yeah, I think about nine, but we didn't know it was like an inner world thing. We just thought it was just, you know, imagination place. <laughs> the, the little imagination land you can make in your head. But, um, yeah, it was more than that. It was the start of, um, the land a little bit up and to the the left of the west, which is the main region where basically everyone hangs out, but we will get to that in a minute. Uh, what kinds of plants slash animals live there? Pretty much the ordinary regional ones you'd expect. Um, we get a ton of deer because most of the land is, you know, like evergreen forests. That's pretty much what our forests are, and most of the land is forest. If it's not mountains, it's forest. <laughs> or, well, there's a desert as well, and lots of ocean. And some plains, but those are on mostly the other continent. So there's... <laughs> My god, it is so complex. I'm just thinking about this, and I'm just like, oh, whatever, this stuff from, you know, essentially, see what equivalent is season one and two to me is just like, you know, the main discoveries of the inner world to the rest of the system. And <laughs> yeah, to me, this is just like a noob stuff we learned forever ago. But to people on the internet, they're probably just like, dang, this is so complex. How do you deal with all this in your head? And it's like <laughs> teamwork, <laughs> lots of teamwork. And uh, somehow it we get through it. Yeah, all right, so I finished pulling all of the loops over these pegs, and now you just push these down, make another row, flip the yarn over and repeat, and it just goes along. And once you have about this much, a few inches knitted, then I'll show you how to make a brim of the hat, because that was a game changer for us. If you, like, that's optional. You don't have to do that. If you don't, it'll just kind of create kind of a curl, curled edge. But if you do... What I'm going to do, it'll kind of give you a bit of a flat edge like this, like a, a nice brim. And I do enjoy that, because beanies slip off of our head a lot, and it's inconvenient. <laughs> what kind of plants and animals besides those? Oh, there's also mooses. Moose, whatever the plural is, and they're very interesting. They will intentionally stop people if they're trying to go through fast... Uh, go through too fast in certain areas and they will literally just run in front of people's vehicles and stand there intentionally to stop them to make them crash into them and that's kind of kind of terrible but at the same time kind of hilarious <laughs> because a lot of us are basically indestructible in the inner world but that's not the case for all alters that's just the case for some of us in this system and that's not even the case for, like, any altars in some other systems. Like, some systems are made of the most, you know, the regular kind of people you'd see walking on the street. And then you've got <laughs> systems like ours who have very complex, very non-human-seeming altars. But that's kind of, you know, each person with DID, their inner world and their alters are tailored to their experiences. So no two systems are going to be the same. Like, 
no two inner worlds. There was actually a question I got. I'm going to skip to this one now. Wait, no, I didn't finish answering the animal question. <laughs> I'll get back to this. So there's the other creatures called whaling dogs. <clears throat> People find these ones really interesting. So they're basically about the size of pit bulls, but they have, you know, long tails, their snouts are a bit longer, and they have two mouths, one nested in the other, kind of like alien, almost, but it's like full set of jaws, but just smaller, instead of like a second tiny mouth that's kind of funky, it's like, you know, full on jaws, and they sound like people screaming, they sound like, <laughs> like someone being attacked, like someone's getting, you know, <laughs> basically murdered outside, and uh, it's not, it's the dogs. You gotta be careful about what you hear outside at night. A lot of things people don't realize is uh, the system has a different mode at night. It's kind of like Silent Hill in a way. Like everything gets a little bit darker at night, but that's just because, you know, Given our trauma, bad things tend to happen at night, usually. But they also happen during the day, so it's kind of always scared time. <laughs> yeah, there's always someone who's in some state of distress somewhere in the system. It's really difficult, and we're trying to remedy that. But altars are really hidden away. There's, you know, a lot of places underground. Like, it actually kind of works... Uh, the next question, whoever wrote this like made sure the questions flowed together pretty good, not gonna lie. What kinds of buildings are there? Have any changed? So, um, the first thing it started out with was kind of this X-shaped building with four wings and only like, only like two of them were ever seen. We never saw the upper ones. God dang it. That's just symbolic of basically the other subsystem that was um, hidden from the rest of us. Because, you know, we were just vibing up there, and they're the only ones down there. It's pretty confusing, because it feels like we're two different systems in one body. But we're the same body, so it's just... Uh, just kind of like different sections, I suppose. But yeah, some buildings, there's, you know, a couple of cities, and there's also the West, which is the main building. This was the main place where the altars lived for the longest time. Like, it's still in use, it's where Devon used to be, and it's where, uh, you know, lots of altars are. Most people have been to the West in the system. If you haven't, it's kind of weird. It's kind of just like, everyone goes there, you know? Like, you haven't been to the West yet? What? And it's it looks like two mountains, but then imagine one mountain was chopped off, and someone built a city on the stump. And that's where, you know, there's a few houses of altars, and then there's the mountain, which is the main focus, actually, because on the inside of that, all it's very carved out on the inside, so there's a bunch of hallways and rooms and tunnels, all sorts of stuff, whole hidden things, and it's, it's gigantic, but that's where most of the altars live. That's kind of the starting point, I suppose, in the system. Like... When you're freshly in altar, you kind of find your way to the west and then kind of go from there. Because that kind of helps you figure out who you are, in a way. You know, there's a lot of people there, a lot of variation. You can fi kind of find who's, who's your good friends, who you vibe with in the system, and it's really nice. Like a common meeting area, I suppose. But it's not always peaceful. <laughs> yeah, we'll get... More to that in a minute. Let's see, a bit more about the regions. Yeah, since we're talking about the west, what else is there? We have the west, we have the east, we have the far west, we have the far east, and we have the north. We don't have the south. We don't have the far north, and we don't have the far south. <laughs> Those just don't exist. 
the South is kind of just a concept. It's basically everything like, you know, a couple cities below the West and then just down. Everything down is just vaguely the South. And you kind of just go there when you're feeling at a loss with yourself and you need to like just get away from everything and kind of vibe in a different environment for a while. And yeah, a few people have done that before, quite a few actually, and quite a few come back. Like dormancy is not always permanent and sometimes that depends on location for us. Location can determine whether you're an active altar or not. Because you've got those two cities, Utopian and Dystopian, which are across the ocean. The far west is on another continent, but it's the only region that's on a separate continent than the other ones. Because they were banished over there. <laughs> there was a whole war and everything. There are lots of wars in the inner world. And for that to be like, you know, said to not be real is kind of funny because, oh my god... These people fight so much, it is ridiculous sometimes. Us us higher-ups in the system are just like, guys, stop it. Like, your children, stop fighting. I feel like a parent or something. <laughs> I really hope I didn't just mess up that stitch. It doesn't look right. Oh, it might be correct. I think so. I'm just going to roll with it. And if it's a little janky, that's okay. This part will be tucked underneath the hat, I think. I think that's how that'll end up being with the rim. Anyway, yeah, the west is kind of the most friendly common area. Most people can go there easily. The east, on the other hand, is not that way. <laughs> the east is a little bit more strict, forbidding, um... Yeah, the west colors are greenish, like greens, deep, deep forest greens, and the east colors are red, like bright, bright reds, and usually with black. Usually everything's kind of paired with black. Um, yeah, each, each region has colors that are very tied to it, which really determines, you know, things that we wear, um, things that we buy out here that are going to be, you know, decoration. Yeah, it, it impacts things. People's regions on the inside, if someone from the east, you know, came out and put on a red shirt, someone from the far west would be like, ugh, get this off of me. <laughs> like, it's this is the wrong color. But if it was something, you know, like a green, like the regular west, they would have been okay with it. Because the far west and the east really had a really big run-in. <laughs> oh, man. You know, we could just tell a full story about this. We call it the Great Rebellion. And it's basically when, you know, one region tried to take over everything and then everyone else was just like, no, and rose up and fought back and sort of restored balance in a way, or at least made it easier to establish balance, kind of taking down the improper structuring that was there. Yeah. Have any changed? <laughs> yes. <sighs> uh, <laughs> I'm just kind of at a loss with this one. It was kind of a real mind blower. So Farkas is the used to be the ruler of the East, but he got um, taken down as emperor. He is no longer the emperor of the East. That is now Su Jin. And... Yes, you always lose these things. Gosh, just, just all the time. And then it just turns out it was under your leg the whole time, and you're just like, why? <laughs> but yeah, um, the colors, I forgot to complete that. The far west is like tans and golds, and then the far east is blues and silvers. And that is where Hollow lives, is in the far east. He's got his cave full of blue things, and it's really cute. 
Yeah, I've I've just been kind of a spectator on all this for so long. It just feels like recounting, you know, if someone put questions about Supernatural up here and was like, oh, questions about Sam and Dean, these guys, what's up with their universe? Ah. But um, we haven't watched Supernatural in like five years, so I don't know why we keep using that as an example. I think it's just, you know, the concept of long-running TV show that's very dear to one's heart. It's kind of how the the main part of the inner world feels to the space subsystem. Yeah, and <laughs> some stereotypes about the uh, regions. I know it's terrible, but you know what? I'm just going to give those anyway, just so you can generally have that idea. The Wests are usually the more, you know, open-minded, emotion-led, thinks-with-the-heart types. Um, the East is usually, you know, jerks. <laughs> They're very strict. Um... Like, you would probably get hurt if you went to the East in the inner world because they have such strict social standards and they're also all basically battle-trained soldiers. <laughs> it's difficult. Uh, it's hard to describe these people. Like, everyone is basically weapons-trained from a young age in the system. And if you don't know how to fight, like, it's kind of a funny thing. It's like, you don't know how to sword fight? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> that's such a, a standard thing. Yeah, we've collected knives ever since we were eight years old. And maybe that has something to do with trauma. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, and then the far west, the ones that got banished to the other continent, they're usually known as these overthinking... Um, bookwormy, brainy types that just, you know, overthink themselves into the ground. <laughs> and then the Far Easterns are, you know, thought of as the weird ones, the weird standoffish ones whose social patterns are unpredictable and just strange. You don't really know a lot about them. And, yeah, there hasn't been a lot on the Far East. I wish there was more, but there's, you know, altars that we should know of, but we don't because we haven't found, I guess, the right person to go to these places. Because sometimes some altars are prevented from going other places that others aren't. I hope that sentence made sense. If not, I'm going to talk more about that kind of thing in a minute anyway. Favorite parts of the inner world... Generally, like, it's terrible, but one of our favorite places is dystopian. It's kind of like Vegas, but, like, a million times more dangerous. <laughs> but it's really fun. It's, uh, really interesting. The lights there are pretty cool, the street lights. But also Utopian's pretty cool. That's north of that. They're along the coast of where the far west is with Utopian being about, mm, I'd say, 350 miles north of Dystopian? I think so. But they have all sorts of lights and, uh, or glass, glass that absorbs solar light for the power for the whole city. It's all solar powered, and I think that's really awesome. And then there are some other places I wish I could tell you about. They're really pretty, but I'm not allowed because they're in, like, deep space. And I would get in so much trouble if I talked about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, um, altars aren't always allowed to say things. And if people are like, why? Like, you can just say it. It's like, no, you can't. They can lock your jaw shut. <laughs> They can freeze your tongue. They can scramble your words and make you say something completely unrelated and totally random. Or make you think you said the thing, and then in reality you just thought the thing. That happens so much. It is, it's a real pain. How many subsystems do you have, and what do you consider one? So we've got two different types of subsystems. We've got, you know... Altar with altars, so essentially an altar who has DID themselves. 
And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about nine, I think. Nine or ten. Yeah, that sounds about right. And then we've got the other kind, which is the separated alters, which is basically like, you know, us in space versus us on the regular planet, which is, there's pretty much just two of those, but like smaller sections of the other subsystem. <laughs> it's basically like, you know, when you have downloads in a computer, you've got your folders, you've got more folders, and then you have some pages there. And you've got some with more folders, and then more folders, and sometimes it just goes way down there. And you can have subsystems that layer down. An altar with altars, in an altar with altars, and it can go on. It's really mind-blowing. I don't think we have any like that beyond, like, first altar with altars. I don't know yet. <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet. But, uh, yeah, we don't think we have any so far. And then the other ones, the separated kind of subsystems, we usually just put that at two, with an asterisk being the other one is very much more segmented than the regular one. So, yeah, pretty much like that. So I'd say, you know, two main ones. We've got, you know, the asteroid subsystem is the outer space ones. We, you can name subsystems too. It's just like naming a regular one, but sometimes it's easier to just, you know, have a title for that subsystem instead of having to be like, you know, this, this altar and them and them and them. And then you have to like think of their names. You could just be like, oh, that subsystem. Like, um, Corvid's is the tower subsystem and ours is the asteroid and uh, there's a few others but they haven't really come up with names yet they need to come up with names that would be cool <laughs> but yeah the asteroid subsystem is the one from space and then uh, I guess we could call the regular one the Vanaheim or just Vanaheim really that's what the planet is named it's uh, named after the Norse mythological land of the unknown. And I don't know if we named that named it that ourselves, or if it was kind of externally titled. Let me see. How many layers are in the inner world, if you have any? <laughs> that kind of fits in with, you know, subsystems. On that one planet, the main planet, Vanaheim, there is another... <laughs> planet in the core <laughs> the core of the planet is another smaller planet and that's where a lot of the deep trauma holders of that section are there's kind of like you know all altar types but in separate sections so we have you know fully functioning whole systems with you know all the altar roles for a complete balance but scattered around so there's multiple of those around hence you know us from asteroid coming down like we've just been living our own lives independently and it's weird to interact with everyone <laughs> it still surprises me sometimes even though I've been here for like three months now <laughs> but but you know it gets yeah still sometimes the existential crises with DID are a real thing. Oh my god. Is it possible... Oh yeah, this is the other one that I was going to get back to. Is it possible for two systems to somewhat share an inner world? To which I would say no. <laughs> Not really. But you could kind of share an inner world in the sense of like introjection, which is where your brain basically takes something from the outer world and basically brings it in, basically kind of photocopies it and puts it in there. Like, say, there's um, 
the east is loosely based off, I believe, of this structure in the never ending story. Except for it's like gray and made out of stones. So inner worlds can be influenced by external things as well, just like altars can be. Like, you know, altars who are interjective media, it's kind of like the same thing. You know, you can get an altar who is a character from a show that was, you know, a great source of comfort during great times of distress. Your brain would be like, hey, you know what would be really helpful right now? That guy right over there. Why don't we bring that in here? And uh, your brain kind of does that subconsciously. You don't really choose to do that. So you can end up with completely random characters. We ended up with a guy from American Horror Story that we never would have expected to get an interject of. And he's just there, and he's just vibing and having a good old time. He's cool. <laughs> but yeah, um, interjection is not only altars. You can get interjects of buildings, um, like elevators, vehicles, uh, yeah, places. But they can also be kind of differ, like differing from what was out in the outer world and what was experienced out here. You know, like the brain kind of tailors that to what is necessary for surviving whatever you're going through. Next question is, do you have seasons? Yes, and they're pretty much the same as out here. They, they pretty much match out here, except for the west. It's like the Pacific Northwest but just rainy pretty much sometimes it snows but not very often but when it does it snows and it's like 10 feet of snow <laughs> it's great everyone kind of you know bases everything off of the west in that planet that's kind of like the focal point that's that's the thing but yeah we do have seasons <laughs> has your inner world grown since you last checked in i don't think yes would suffice <laughs> Uh, so much. Um, it's basically like a tip of the iceberg kind of thing, except for the tip of the iceberg was just the part of the inner world that wasn't blurred out. Because, you know, we have that globe that we made. I'll, I'm going to grab that and show you, because some people might not have seen it. If you're new here, we do have a playlist that we call Best for Beginners. It's, you know, you go to our channel and under playlists, and then there's, you know, some playlists. Best for Beginners has a lot of those, you know, questions about what is a lot of these phrases I'm using and stuff. We painted a globe. <laughs> I'll just hold you here. Yeah, this was the main focal point. And the west is there, and then east, far east, and then far west. It's across this ocean here. I didn't expect my rambles to be so rambly. I'm running out of space on my phone again, so I'll just keep talking until it like totally dies, and whatever isn't answered here, I'm going to do in a part two. And we'll continue the hat as well. We'll save it for our Q&A videos. And we'll work on this hat together. And we'll complete this. And it'll be bomb. All right. Any new places discovered in this time? Yes. Other planets. There's other planets. But they're a lot smaller. You know, there's this, this guy. And we'd say, you know, a lot of the other ones are about the size of this yarn ball in comparison. Like, the moons are about this size. You know, I'd say a little bit bigger than that, maybe. Like about the size of probably Pusheen in comparison. <laughs> like, not the same size. Not bit, like, a lot smaller, but not, like, tiny smaller. So basically about enough for, you know, a good five to ten solid altars to be on. Like, it sounds like it's a lot, but it's just a bunch of altars very spread out, intended to be introduced over a very long period of time, given uh, a pace of altars getting worn out that our brain was, you know, expected to have. Which sounds absolutely off the walls, I know. But uh, systems can be kind of structured externally by other people. 
Yeah. Uh, did your which actually leads to this? Did your inner world ever make you doubt your validity as a system, like comparing your inner world to other systems? Not really, because ever since we were young, we were always thinking like you know our altars are this, and they live. <laughs> <laughs> text from acrylic oh my god someone is new in their system and out and with amnesia well that works so this video won't be too much longer then i'll i'll go and help them in a minute but um yeah we always thought of it this is actually a great spot to end oh my god okay i'll just end on this question and that's actually a good spot to start next time perfect because it starts on how has your inner world changed over time great way to start a video so that'll be our part two but our inner world, we always thought of it kind of like our inner world is what is best for our altars, is what is the most fitting environment for them to be in, if not out here. Like, what would their ideal environments be, kind of? But uh, it's not, like, ideal, ideal. We just kind of assumed it was this way without really knowing how compl complex everything actually was. So... Yeah, we always assumed that everyone's inner world kind of was made to fit what their altars were and how much they could handle. Because I imagine, like, you know, having a house then having our altars in it, we could not exist in a house together without basically tearing the thing apart. So that's why we always assumed, like, our inner world is so big to accommodate these altars who just clash up with each other all the time. That's why it's so big, because everyone just needs their space. But, you know, it turns out that it also is that way, and it also hides trauma. A lot of that. Alright, goblins, so, ending segment. Be, be sure to check out our description. We've got all the links and everything down there. Um, Etsy, uh, other social medias, other channels you may want to check out. Like, for example, a shout-out today will go to Daisy Air, who is another system who has a super complex inner world like ours. And they talk about a lot of really cool stuff. They're a single parent with DID and are absolutely rocking it. Keep on keeping on, y'all. And they just share their growth and healing process. And it's really, really nice and really wholesome. And I would recommend them. They've got a lot of really good reassuring content. And, like, super comforting given these times. Yeah, these times are rough. So hang in there, guys. <laughs> goblins all of you we care about you you're not alone and we see you all and this this year has been a struggle but we made it we made it through 2020 and that absolutely rules now you kicked butt <laughs> good job good job making it through 2020 <laughs> yes heck yeah So hang in there, goblins. Uh, thank you for tuning in. If you're not a goblin yet, all you have to do is hit subscribe, and you should probably uh, put on notifications because you don't get notified of what we do if you're only subscribed. You have to hit that notification thing too, like like both of it. It's, it's social media. It'd be like that sometimes. <laughs> it's complicated. But we will continue this hat together next time. It may not be me who is knitting it, but that's kind of how knitting things works in these systems. So please take care of yourselves. Uh, don't forget to drink enough water. I'm saying that to my system as well. <laughs> Everyone's dehydrated, I swear. <laughs> so practice enough self-care, and we will see you all in the next video.